Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to do some different glazing techniques. You've learned to do basic underglaze and basic overglaze with me. How to use underglaze and mix it to create realistic color. How to use overglaze, either one type of overglaze or layering different types together. But today we're going to learn how to play a little bit with our glazes um, and some different techniques you can use that add a lot of interest to the surface of your piece. This is a longer video. I highly recommend you watch it in sections and then try things out or play it at a faster speed if you want a quick overview and then go back a little bit slower um, when you're ready to try something out. I had a lot of fun playing around. Um, I've got some good outcomes and I've got some that aren't as strong. And I want you to remember that the purpose of this project, these little coasters that we've made, um, is to play with our glazes, to learn what's possible, to see what happens when we try things out. So I want you to release a little bit and know that if you have something, you try it, it doesn't turn out, it's not the end of the world. It's okay, that's part of art, that's part of learning. Sometimes things work out and work out better than we anticipated and sometimes they don't work out so hot and it's okay. Both of those things are okay. So have some fun, play, experiment, and see what you can do. The first thing you need to do before you start glazing is to set up a notes page in your sketchbook. When ceramists are working with glaze, they want to see how different glazes interact with each other and there's a lot of experimentation involved. We take notes, so when these pieces come out of the kiln, if we see something we really like, we can replicate it. Or if we notice something doesn't work well, we can avoid it in the future. If you get really into ceramics or glazing, you'll start mixing your own glazes and keeping great notes of measurements and weights and firing temperatures is super important. So it's a great step right now to just kind of keep track of what glazes you use, what the outcome is like, and that way moving forward you know what you like and what you don't like. So I've got all of the different glaze techniques that I'm going to do on my left. So we're going to do a wax resist, a scraffito, a stencil, a sponge, and an experimental glaze. And on the right I have all my texture techniques that I've already applied to my pieces. Stamped, rolled, carved, multiple additives, and experimental texture. Once I've started working on the glaze on each of these pieces, I note what I'm going to do to the piece. So if you look at Scraffito, you can see that I've already gone in and written down the steps that I'm going to do with glazing. I have one layer or layer one of black underglaze, which has been fired, and then L2 stands for layer two, two coats of clear transparent. It's important to write down how many coats you used. I should indicate that this has been fired already, and eventually I'd want to write down the temperature at which it's fired. So make sure you keep notes on your pieces as they come out. The awesome things about a, a class keeping notes like this is if you see a classmate have a piece come out of the kiln that you love how the glaze turned out, you can always ask them to see their notes so you can replicate that in your own work. Here's my Scraffito piece. It's been fired and I'm gonna glaze this. This one's pretty easy. It's just two coats of clear underglaze. If you wanted to put a transparent colored glaze over this, you could, but really just do the transparent. You'll be much happier. A uh, piece in the kiln broke and it hit this piece and it chipped a little bit of the corner of my bird. So before I do the clear transparent, I'm just going to touch up that little corner with just a little bit of black underglaze. Oh, I've touched up my little spot. I've let it dry. I shook up my clear transparent and I'm just going to apply um, two coats. I'm going to start on my edges and then I'll go to the top. Apply a first even layer. Make sure you brush from multiple directions to get it into all the textures. Let that first layer dry completely, then add the second and make sure to clean off the back when you're Here done. Here is the finished Scraffito. You can see that it's got a clear coat on the top that if you do a colored glaze, it really deepens the color, makes it a little bit rich. I'm really happy with the outcome on this piece. The next glazing technique that we're gonna learn about is wax resist. It's a really fun way to play with the raw clay versus a glazed surface. So what I've done first is I went in and I underglazed a tile. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply this product. This is Amico Wax Resist to the surface. And if you can see, it's pretty gummy around the top here. Um, I've shaken this up pretty well. And when you open it up, there's a kind of a creamy liquid inside. And we're gonna apply it to our tile. It dries like this. Okay, so the water 
releases and it's just a waxy substance. I can and wherever I apply that wax on the surface, it's going to resist my overglaze. So the overglaze is water-based, so it's going to force that overglaze off of the space where there's wax into the places where there's not. When I fire it, the wax will burn off and it'll leave the raw clay underneath. Shake that baby up and then you're going to want to use a small clean brush to apply it. Something to note with the wax is you're going to want to wash your brush right away because if it dries, if you wash your brush while the wax is still wet on it, um, it's going to be just fine. If you let it dry, it doesn't like to come off as much. As you apply your wax, take your time. It can be difficult to remove if you make a mistake. So I've applied the wax to the surface of my piece. I'm gonna let this dry completely, and you can see where it's dry, um, the kind of the milky color of the wax resist has disappeared and it's more translucent. I'm gonna take my um, brush over to the sink. I'm gonna wash it up with soap and water. I'm gonna make sure that all that wax is out of the brush, otherwise it will ruin the brush. All right, I'm not quite dry yet. If you look, there's some areas here, here, and here where the wax is still a little bit damp. Um, but I'm gonna start anyways, because I'm a rebel. No, it's because I need to show you other things in the video. I so, picked a black glaze because I have a colorful background. Um, the clay that we are using in class is a white clay. So, you know, if you're gonna leave the clay as your background, pick a darker glaze or a more colorful glaze. You're gonna shake up the glaze like always. Make sure you hold that top on. You're gonna use a soft bristle, bristled brush and you're just gonna gently brush the glaze onto your piece. This technique only works with a thinner glaze. Don't use something that's too thick. Here you can see me removing excess glaze with a little bit of water. One of the things you might be asking or wondering is like, okay, well, how do I use wax resist? Really common way to use wax resist is on the bottom of like a wheel thrown vessel. You put it on the bottom of the foot so that when you glaze it, the glaze doesn't stick to the foot. You could also come up around the edge of the, the vessel too. Um, and it just helps you to create like a nice line where glaze stops and the raw clay on the foot of the vessel exists. Um, you can use it like I am here to do decorative work with glazing, um, so to create patterns. And remember that when this glaze fires, the glaze is gonna be bright and shiny. And the colored area is underglazed, so it's gonna be matte finish. So I'm gonna have the contrast of color and I'm gonna have the contrast of glaze versus um, matte. Um, so you can create patterns, um, you can add details, you can add interest to your piece. Um, I've also seen artists use it um, to keep one area of their piece with a matte finish. Um, so let's say they they have a bird on their piece that they've underglazed and they want that bird to have a matte finish because a bird in nature would not be shiny. But they want um, the leaves on a tree around the bird to have a glazed finish and they don't want to, they don't have the time to be really careful and particular about where they apply glaze and where they don't. Um, and they want to make sure that that glaze doesn't run onto the bird. So what they would do is they would underglaze the bird and then they would put wax resist over the bird and then they're free, free to glaze the rest of the piece with a little bit more abandon, a little bit um, less carefully and still have a nice finished piece. So there was my second coat. Now I'm just gonna go in and clean off my wax resist again. You can see when it gets wet, when I apply that water, it just peels right off the wax. And that's where a thinner glaze is gonna work a little bit better than a thicker glaze on this. Can I just say that this is so satisfying to do, by the way? I've also updated my notes for wax resist. I wrote layer one, chartreuse, turquoise, medium blue underglaze, fired. Layer two was wax, and layer three was amico opalescent black tulip, two coats. So when you update, you write the brand, the line, and the color, okay? Here is the finished wax resist. I wish I had done one more coat of that um, overglaze. You can see where there's the sheen. I really wish I had the sheen everywhere. When I pulled the, the overglaze off with the water, I thinned it perhaps a little bit too much, but I still enjoy the contrast between the color and the black. The next technique I'm gonna show you is a stencil. You can purchase stencils, but we're going to make our own because why purchase something when you can make your own and make it more unique, right? So this is the stencil I'm gonna use. I'll take you through the process. Your first step is you're gonna want some kind of film to make a stencil on. 
We have this plastic film that we use in class. If you're at home, you could use a wax paper, um, any kind of like firmer plastic. You're gonna draw whatever shape that you want to make your stencil. In this case, I used a leaf shape with a little bit of a stem coming through it. Then you're gonna put this on a cutting surface, which could just be a piece of cardboard, or we have cutting mats at school. You're gonna use a sharp X-Acto knife and you're gonna cut out all this negative space or the positive space. You're gonna leave behind the negative space or the space around the outside. As far as glazing goes, um, you're going to first, with a stencil, do two coats of a glaze to cover the whole piece. And then you're going to pick a color of glaze that is high contrast with that. So my background, I'm gonna use Mako Elements Sea Spray, which is a very, very light blue. And my top layer, I'm actually gonna use three different colors, um, but they're all darker than the Sea Spray. Um, and they are all in, a gre in the green family. Um, I'm also keeping it within the same brand and line. They tend to do more interesting things when they, when they mix. So I've got Spanish Moss, Turtle Shell, and sea green, all Mako Elements. Um, Mako Elements glazes are some of my favorite ones to have my students use. They're pretty solid, come out really nicely. So I'm gonna do two coats of the sea spray. I'm gonna let this set up and then do a second coat in the opposite direction. All right, my background layer is dry. Again, I have my background layer is light in color. I'm using darker colors in a different hue for the the top layers. Um, you could potentially have a dark background with light top layer, but I'm gonna warn you that a lot of times those dark glazes will overtake the light. So if you do a dark background and you put light things on top, you don't always see the light things. I'm gonna lay my stencil down, and then I'm gonna get a sponge that's damp. Okay, not wet, there's no liquid coming out of it if I squeeze it, it's damp. If I can dip my sponge into my glaze, I will. I can't dip it into this one. Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit on the end here. Hold that stencil nice and tight and dab straight up and down to apply the glaze. And then you lift your stencil. You can always reuse a stencil, so I could lay this down again and I could keep glazing across this piece with layers and layers and layers of these leaves. Um, what I'm gonna do instead is I have another stencil with the same type of leaf. Once these two dry, I'm gonna use other leaves on this with different colors and I'm just gonna keep adding layers of leaves to my piece. I'm gonna rinse my sponge between um, so that I've got a nice clean surface to work on and just have some fun layering things up. Make sure you let coats dry before applying new coats. You don't wanna put a stencil over a wet layer. Every time I do a new piece, I let it dry first. What you're gonna see next is me not liking the glaze. So I scrape it off, I wash it off with a little bit of water, reapply the back coat, and then I add new on top. If you don't like some glaze that you've done, this is the route I recommend. Scrape, rinse, reapply. Here is the finished stencil. You can see that it's a really subtle piece. The color on these two leaves, I think that was the turtle shell, turned out a bit darker than the other colors, which honestly is fine. It's really soft and subtle. I think it turned out really pretty. My next technique I'm gonna show you is a sponge technique. And for this technique, you can either, you can do it in two ways. One, you can just use the sponge as opposed to a paintbrush to apply the glaze, which gives kind of a different texture to the glaze. Or um, I have these compressed sponges that we can cut into and make shapes. So I'm gonna cut into this and make a star shape. I'd highly recommend drawing your shape out before just cutting away. Um, <laughs> Usually you have a better outcome than just randomly um, cutting a shape, but um, you can cut a shape into the sponge, relatively simple shapes. I wouldn't get too much more complicated than a star. Um, and then we're gonna use that to apply a glaze in a specific shape, almost like we did with the stencils, just a different route. So you're gonna finish cutting your sponge, then you're gonna use a damp sponge to apply a coat in one layer. I'm gonna fade one color into another, so I do two coats of each layer overlapping in the middle with a little bit of sponge texture in between. Here I'm coming in with a star with a lighter glaze and applying the stars on top. I'm doing two layers of each star. Here is my stamped. If I spin it, you can see there's a little, the stars show up a little bit when you're looking close. The glaze I used in the background has a metallic nature to it, so you can see how shiny it is. It almost has like a golden hue to it. Um, and in person, you can see the texture of the stamping on it. 
However, remember how I said if you're gonna do a dark background and put light on top, you probably won't see the light? Do y'all see what I mean? I can't see those stars. You really want to make sure if you're doing layers that the lightest layer is in the back and the darker layers are on top. And you can see why here. The last glaze technique I want you to try is to experiment. Look up a glaze technique I haven't taught you and try it, or make up one of your own. Here I'm using a technique I've seen done elsewhere and applying it to my tile. I have underglazed my tile with gray underglaze, which will fire to a matte finish, and then I'm using a variety of overglaze colors and a ball-ended tool to apply little dots onto my piece. I'm pretty excited to see how this one comes out. Make sure whenever you're done doing any of your glazes, the first thing that you're going to do is write down your glaze information in your glaze notes. Um, okay, I'm in love with this one, y'all. I'm going to have to try this on some other things. I really like how the underglaze is a matte finish and those little dots are nice and shiny. Um, I like this little black line I put in there. Yay me! <laughs> um, but I'm really happy with the outcome of this piece. It took a long time to get all these dots laid in, um, but I would definitely try this glaze technique out on things in the future. We're going to use our textured tiles to experiment with layering glazes in different ways. So on all these tiles, you're going to see me layering up different glazes so I can test what happens when one glaze interacts with another. So on this one, I put one coat of orange on the whole thing, and then this background is a darker color that I put over the orange. Then I'm putting a second coat of orange on the flower, and then I'm going to end with a little black in the center. And I want to see what happens when all those different colors overlap with each other. Don't forget your glaze notes! I think that turned out pretty nice. I like how warm this piece is. On my rolled texture, I really want to bring out the texture of the lace. So I picked glazes that I know have a lot of transparency. I did one coat of a light blue and I'm going over that with a turquoise and then I'm going to do light blue in the center and a second coat of turquoise on the outside just to have some subtle variation and not flood away my texture. This one, the variation between the lace where I had the turquoise and the center where it was just bluebell isn't quite as strong as I would love, but you know what? You still see that lace texture really beautifully, um, and that's probably what's most important in this piece, so I'm happy with this outcome. All right, so here I'm playing with a couple different layers of different um, Amico Elements glazes, a green glaze on the bottom, a dark red-brown on the top, and then I'm putting a little black over the top of that just to see what happens when those glaze mix. I want to know if it's something I want to use in future pieces. I'm also using a sponge technique just so I can get the top of the texture on this one. Don't forget the glaze notes. This one is a little darker than I anticipated, um, but I think that the... Um, stamping and the layering has given some nice effects to the piece and I could see myself using these colors on a piece in the future if I wanted it to be on the darker side. Up until this point I've stayed with the same brand of glaze on each tile. On this one I'm mixing two different brands, a Spectrum with an Amico. I'm also trying to fade a darker glaze on the outside in towards a lighter one in the middle. Look at that fade. So I've got my purple in the center faded to that blue on the outside. The purple haze has little chunks in it that turn black. You can see those little speckles in there. Um, and I think it sat down into that flower texture really nicely. I'm really happy with this one as well. All right, I've said it 50 million times. Don't forget your glaze notes, you guys. It's really important. It's super easy to forget what glaze you use. On this one I'm doing a blue glaze overall. When you're doing a heavy texture like this, you really want to make sure you get a looser glaze and that you flood the piece so that texture gets down between pieces. It's also really hard on a highly textural piece like this to glaze two areas different colors, so I often recommend that students glaze the whole piece with two coats of one color and then do a third coat of a different color in the other area. Here is my little seascape. Um, I really love the colors with this and the sheen. Um, that little bit of green on top of the blue here I think added some nice contrast and really brought out the variations between this space and these guys here. Don't forget to wash the backs of your tiles. It's so important. We don't want it to stick to the kiln. Use a sponge, clean them up really nicely in the end before you put it back in the kiln room. Here they all are together, folks. It was a blast making these and playing around with different techniques. I can't wait to apply some of them to my ceramics as I work forward in the future. I think it opened my eyes up to some new techniques myself, such as these, um, and some different ways that I can approach glazing and working with the surface of my ceramics. Have some fun and experiment, my friends.